Hey guys, uh, I thought I would take you along on this contribution to an open source project called Thor. Um, Thor is actually what powers all of the Rails generators. It has commands to generate files from templates and modify files, and it knows how to undo a lot of those things as well. So it's a really powerful tool, and a lot of people don't know about it, but it's actually under the hood of Rails and used for all the generators. So as I was building the generator for the notifications library, noticed um, someone mentioned that the type column should be set to null is false, which I agree. Um, but unfortunately, the Rails generators don't allow you to specify that as an option when you are creating that on the command line. So the generator can't actually pass in null is false is an option for that field. So what I need to do is actually go and find the migration that was generated and then insert a line into that file or, or just modify that file a little bit. So um, Thor provides an insert into file and you give it a path and you say, after this text, I wanna insert this text. And it's pretty straightforward, it seems. However, I ran into this bug or what seems like a bug uh, because insert into file doesn't work the way you would expect it to. So when you say insert after this string, you expect it to just find that string and then insert this text. But it wasn't doing that. In fact, it was just doing nothing. It was saying that it wasn't able to, um, to do it. And I started to read through the Thor source code to figure out what was wrong. So when you run into one of those times where something works unexpectedly, you don't want to just uh, write your exception. That's a great opportunity to go learn how that library works and contribute an open source um, contribution to it, you know, a fix or an improvement. And that is one of the things that improves my skills as a Rails developer the most. And so I wanted to do that with Thor. So to find that, we just need to search through Thor's source code and figure out where that is defined. Now, inject into file, is very similar to the insert into file method and that is where this is defined. So we can read through the source code and see what's going on. Um, and basically this method just uh, instantiates this class and then gives it over to this action method, which I assume actually runs it. So inject into file takes a base destination data in config and then it looks for the after and before and tries to determine which one you are trying to use. And we have our um, flag, it appears, to be set as the actual string we're looking for inside of there. And uh, that is something that we can use. And it looks like it's converted to a reg regex um, if it's a string by default. So that is something important to know. And then the invoke method is called whenever you run this. So we can read through this and figure out what's going on. Basically, it's checking to see if we're doing a before or an after, and it's generating some interesting string here, and it appears that when we call replace, that is where it's doing the real work. And if we look at the bottom of the file, replace is defined here. So that's how I found where the actual work was being done, and I realized what it's doing is it's reading the entire file's contents and then it's checking to see if the content includes your new string anywhere. It ignores the before and the after options when it's checking that file. And that is the issue. Because the other field on my migration, the references polymorphic, has a null as false that Rails generates, it already finds the null as false and we can't insert another one. And so that is our problem. So what I would like to do is try to fix this um, method and add tests for it to actually look at the subset of the file that we are trying to change, the before or after section, and actually use that. So what I did was I forked the repo in GitHub. Now I have a copy of it on my um, GitHub account. And then I went to my terminal and cloned that and I opened up the same file here. So now we can actually inspect this and write tests for it and actually fix what um, we're doing here. Now typically in most projects that have uh, well-written tests you'll find an equivalent file that's called underscore spec or underscore test and that's where the tests are for that same feature. 
as you can see, they're right here. Um, and invoke has a bunch of uh, tests in here and basically says, you know, it changes the file, adding content after the flag. And it does not change the file and logs the warning if the flag is not found in the file. And um, if it already includes the content. And so this is the one that we're kind of, um, you know, this is the one that actually is what was unexpected to me. So this test is a good example of one that we uh, want to look at more deeply. So really, this should be fine as long as uh, we are inserting duplicate content in that section of the file that is, you know, after that matching string. So anything before that, we should be able to ignore. And after that, we should check for the duplicate in that section. Um, and that's what we want to do here. So the easiest test we can actually grab here is changes the file after adding content after the flag. We could also do this um, and say ignores duplicates before the after flag. Something like that to describe um, adding a duplicate line to the file. Now, this test appears to open up this doc readme and apply this work to it. So if we went in to our terminal or our editor and said, find me doc readme, we can see this is the file that it's referencing. It's in spec fixtures. Makes sense. This is a file that gets modified and reset um, for every test. And it looks like what they're trying to do is insert the words more content after start. So for our version of this, what if we tried to insert another readme line after the first readme line? Seems reasonable, right? So we could say readme and readme, and we would expect to have the two mentions of readme here. And we can then go into our local directory and run bundle to install all the dependencies. Because we're running rspec, we can just simply say rspec um, and the file name, which is actions inject into file spec, and we can give it the line number for our test, which is line 37. Now this is going to fail because um, we expected it to have the duplicate lines in there of readme and readme, but it only got one. So from here, what I like to do is uh, actually figure out what's happening in this code. I don't know what all these variables are, their types or anything like that. So oftentimes I'll put in a binding IRB, a by bug, a binding dot pry, something in here um, to actually, you know, see what I'm looking at. So let's run this again and let's print out that regexp argument. And strangely, we don't get any output there. And if we print out like a variable, like, or a, you know, an integer like one, you don't get anything there either. And that makes me think that something is capturing the standard out output. So if we look at the code for this and the RSpec um, helpers and things, we'll see that invoke is called, and we actually have that defined up here. And then there's a capture standard out. So chances are this capture standard out is actually eating some of that uh, output from IRB. So if we remove that, this will help us inspect what's going on. You'll see there's syntax highlighting now. So there was, you know, unique things in the tests that are going to make debugging a little bit harder. So if we run this now, we can print out regex p string force. We can also print out like the other variables like behavior. Um, and that is the one we're really after because we want to know, you know, if you're looking for stuff after the flag, and the flag is the the thing you're looking at in the file to insert before or after. That's what they call the flag. Um, we need to be able to find that in our file. So if we said content, uh, really we would like to be able to split it on the regex there. And depending on if we're looking at the stuff before or after, we want to search the correct section for that. So we can grab, um, you know, if it's 
If it's after, then we could grab the last section of the file and then check to see if that includes the text we're inserting. So this is getting us some progress. Um, we can undo this because now we know kind of what those variables do. And we're grabbing the content, and so we really want to split the content on that regex. But one of the things is that that regex could be, you know, like in our case, read me, um, but that could be in there multiple times. So we probably only want to get the first uh, instance of that. And if you do a split, you're going to basically remove the words that you split on and give you everything before and everything after, and then do that every single time that it is found in the file. But if we limit that to two here with the second argument to split, then it will only ever give us an array of two items. So we can see before and after. And that's really useful. So then we know the content and we can say if behavior equals after, then we can see if after includes the replacement text. And otherwise we can see if the before includes the replacement text. So this is um, nice. This works mostly the way we want it, but we need to be able to put this inside of our uh, if statement here, because right now it's still checking the entire content. We could try and reassign the content, but that's going to be a problem because when we go and actually change the content to insert our new string, we'd already have gotten rid of part of the file uh, before or after that. So we can't reassign content here. Um, and we could call this like the substring or something, which could be pretty good, I would guess. Um, then we can here say after or before. And this substring is what we could actually use to um, check if it includes. So we leave the content alone and modify it and leave the rest of the behavior alone. We're really just trying to change this logic here. So if that works, uh, we can talk through this one more time. Grab all the content out of the file. We split it on the flag so we have the before and the after. And then if the behavior is to insert it after, we want it to grab the stuff after. And if the behavior is to insert it before, we want to check the stuff before. And that's our substring um, or our snippet, whatever you want to call this. It doesn't really matter. Um, it's just kind of the smaller piece of the content. And we want to check that. So logically, I think this makes sense. We can run this test again, and it passes. That's good. Let's run the whole file, though, and see if we broke anything else. And unfortunately, we definitely did. So we've got only two tests, though. We're getting an undefined method include for a nil class on this snippet. And if we think about this, if there was a string that wasn't in that file and we tried to split the file, if we open up IRB and we say hello and we split on world uh, and we want two, we're going to get before and after set to string of hello and then after is going to be nil because there wasn't anything after the match. There was no match. So all of the content came before. And that is the source of our problem. Basically, this is generating nils now, and we always had a string before. And so now if we want, we can convert this to a string, and that should do the trick. So let's try running our file and seeing if we can get all the tests to pass. And it looks like they did. So this is good. And we need to then do a very similar thing, but with the after or with it before, we already did the after. So we can grab this um, and we can say before the flag. We'll do the same thing before that oh, readme line. Let's insert another readme. And we'll run all the tests again 
and they pass. So let's run the full uh, suite, make sure all those tests pass. That's kind of important. We don't want to break anything else, even though it's you know outside of that file. Um, but effectively, you know, we added two tests, and this is now going to do a little bit more work. It's just going to grab a subset of the file and compare against that. But this method of insert into file should actually work a, a little bit more as expected. To me, when I ran into this uh, originally in my generator, and this line didn't do anything, I was like, what is going on? And I actually opened up Thor and put a buy bug inside of Thor and tried to figure out where it was running and what was happening and why it wasn't doing what it should have been doing. Um, because I knew that all my inputs for after and the string were correct. They, were, they matched all the examples. So something was going on inside of Thor. So I was able to detect that, you know, it's not an issue with my code, chance, probably, chances are, um, but there could have been. So if I go into Thor's source code, I'll be able to figure that out a little bit easier. And that's what we figured out. So uh, this improves Thor and teaches me a little bit about how Thor works, how it's organized, and gives me a little bit of a challenge to see how that works. So this is really useful to take a little bit of time to go and you know improve a tool like Thor, but also just improve my own skills as a developer. It's great to be able to read someone else's code, start to pick up how they've organized it, their intentions and all those things, and then contribute to that. So um, that is really all there is to it. The next steps are really to create a pull request on GitHub and submit that over to Thor um, and push this up to my repo so we can do that. And then hopefully that will be a feature added to Thor in the future. Now, unfortunately, our gem still has to use the version of Thor that's currently out, so we can't use that um, yet. It's not great for gems to depend on uh, gems that are not fully published, so you don't ever want a gem to depend on a GitHub repo. That's likely to break, and so they don't uh, allow that. And so we still have to use the force is true option. It does what we need it to do, but it's not great. And I have to include this information here uh, that basically like, well, we're working around kind of um, a bug or a misunderstood or incomplete feature of Thor. And so now hopefully we'll be able to have contributed to Thor and made the world just a little bit of a better place. So um, yeah, I hope that was helpful to understand what went through my brain as I was working on this in the process of, you know, I can fix my code by learning how Thor works, but I can take it a step further and improve my skills by actually contributing to Thor. And then I can also hopefully improve things for everybody else by improving Thor as well. So I like to go out of my way and do those things because it helps me and it helps you guys and it's a win-win. So that is it for this episode. I hope you enjoyed it. And if you'd like to see more like this, let me know in the comments below. I will talk to you guys in the next one. Peace.